Hi, have a nice day. I am Aryan B. Villanueva, BS Criminology for the Street. And today, I will be discussing the historical perspective of correction. Now, let's proceed. According to Pat Conroy, Redemption, when guilt leads to good. Now, this is the start of everything. In the year 13th century, securing sanctuary, a criminal could avoid punishment by claiming refugee in a church for a period of 40 days. In the year 1468, torture as a form of punishment became prevalent in England. Code of Hammurabi in Early Codes The famous line, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Kung anong ginawa mo sa kapwa mo, yun din ang gagawin sa'yo. The second one is Code of Draco. The Draconian Constitution or Draco's Code was a written law code created by Draco near the end of the 7th century BC in response to the unjust interpretation and modification of oral law by Athenian aristocrats. Dito, kahit minor offense lang ang nagawa mo ay kamatayan na ang parusa mo. And last, Burgundian Code. Specified punishment according to the social class status. Dito nakadepende ang parusa mo kung mayaman o mahirap ka. Early Codes in the Philippines Code of Kalanchao The Code of Raha Kalanchao was supposed legal code in the epic history Maragtas. Written in 1433 by Dato Kalanchao, a chief on the island of Negros in the Philippines. Code of Kalanchao has 18 articles, just click the link below. In the year 16th century, transportation of criminals in England is authorized. Serious crimes were punished with capital punishment. The most common method of execution was by hanging. In 17th and 18th century, death penalty. Many defendants were sentenced to more than one punishment. This is particularly common for those sentenced to the pillory, imprisonment, weeping, fines, and providing sureties for good behavior. A gradually growing reluctance to use the death penalty in the 18th century. Forms of death. Execution with additional cruelty. Women found guilty of either treason or petty treason were sentenced to be burned alive at the stake. Though, executioners usually struggled with women with a cord before lighting the fire. Burning at the stake was abolished in 1790 and replaced by drawing and hanging. The other one, imprisonment. A growing desire to reform convicts rather than just punish them led to development of imprisonment as a punishment for serious offenses. Next, corporal punishments. Early modern punishment including whipping and the pillory frequently used physical harm, often inflicted as a public spectacle, as a method of deterring crime. Offenders, mostly those convicted of theft, were sentenced to be striped to the waist and whipped at a cart's tail along the length of public street, usually near the scene of the crime, until his back be bloody. And now, let's proceed to the golden age of penology in the year 1817-1880. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. That was the golden rule. Within these two decades arose numerous reform movements, sparked during the July monarchy. The common goal of the reformers was to eliminate crime and improve current prisoners by rehabilitation. To understand the desired changes, previous conditions of the system need to be known. Significant events This image illustrates the conditions of prisons during the 18th century. As can be seen, men, women, and children are all held in the same cell. There are no beds and there are about 10 people in the one cell. Perhaps, of these prisoners will be gone by the next day, either to the galleys or to their death. Goals or Jails The description given to pre-trial detention facilities operated by English sheriff in England in the year 18th century. Next, Hulks. These are former warship used to house prisoners in the 18th and 19th century. The warship converted into prison. The hawks as a form of punishment. Galleys. A gallery slave is a slave rowing in a galley. 
either a convicted criminal sentenced to work at the ORP or a kind of human shuttle. Often, a prisoner of war assigned to his duty of ruling. Next, ordeals. A painful or horrific experience, especially a protracted one. These are some examples of ordeals. Trial by hot iron, trial by hot water, and trial by combat. And now, let's move on to Age of Enlightenment. It's the period of recognizing human dignity. There are three primary schools of penology, the classical school, neoclassical school, and positivist or the Italian school. First, classical school. According to the classical school of criminology, all behavior is a product of the individual's free will, as a result of the belief that the people being governed have to be in agreement with the control of their government. Government by the consent of the governed. Gumagawa ng krimen ang isang tao dahil sa kanyang kagustuhan. Walang maayos sa sistema ng batas noon. Kung nakagawa ka ng krimen noon, ikaw ay mapaparusahan. The purpose of penalty is retribution. Punishment inflicted one someone as vengeance for a wrong or criminal act. Paano pag bata ang nakagawa ng krimen o kaya ay baliw? Siya pa rin ay liable. Ang classical school of thought ay nakafocus sa krimen. There is no exemption. Second, neoclassical school. So, not all persons were completely responsible for their own actions. Positive treatment towards mental illness type explanations. Ang tao daw ay hindi niya man nakokontrol ang free will niya kaya't nakakagawa siya ng krimen. Dahil daw may mga factors na di niya nakokontrol ang sarili. Gaya ng mga bata o baliw kasi di niya alam ang ginagawa. Hindi gaya ng classical school na walang exemption. Dito may exemption. Nakafocus ang neoclassical school sa exemption sa mga bata at baliw. And the last, positivist or the Italian school of penology. Human behavior is determined and not a matter of free will. Criminals are fundamentally different from non-criminals. Social scientists can be objective in their work. Crime is frequently caused by a multiple factors. Dito naman ay nakafocus sa tao. Sabi dito sa positivist, ang nagtutulak sa tao para gumawa ng krimen ay biological or mga physical features niya, psychological behavior niya, sociological. Sabi ng society, ang nagtutulak daw na gumawa ng krimen ang isang tao ay dahil sa society. Ngayon naman, ating balikan at tuklasin ang kasaysayan ng ating mahal na bayan patungkol sa perspective of correction. History of Bureau of Correction in the Philippines Corrections in the Philippines started during pre-colonial times. It was however organized on individual community basis. It was only during the Spanish regime when an organized corrective service was made op operational. When the Americans took over in the 90s, the Bureau of Prison was created under the Reorganization Act of 1905, Act No. 1407, dated November 1, 1905. The Bureau of Correction in the Philippines. There are some examples. Old Believed Prison in Manila. On June 25, 1865, the Old Believed Prison, the first national penitentiary in the country, was established in Manila under the Spanish Royal Decree, known today as the Manila City Jail with the land area of 551 hectares but the 104 hectares were transferred to a housing project of the Department of Justice. The second one, New Believed Prison located at Muntinlupa City. On January 22, 1914, named the New Believed Prison located in Muntinlupa City with a land area of 587 hectares and have a capacity of 300 prisoners. The Correctional Institution for Women or CIW was born via and signing of Act No. 3579 on November 1929, which authorized the transfer of all women inmates of the Old Believed Prison in Manila to a new facility located at Mandaluyo. The land area of CIW is 18 hectares with a total capacity of 200 inmates. Again, I am RLB Villanueva, your presenter for today. Keep safe and God bless.